Cleopatra, born in 69 BC in Alexandria, an ancient city founded by Alexander the Great in the Nile Delta, was a significant queen of ancient Egypt. Even today, she remains one of the most well-known women in history. Throughout her life, Cleopatra was known for her strategic thinking, determination, high intelligence, and vast wealth. Greek philosopher Plutarch once wrote about her, describing the irresistible impact of her presence. Cleopatra fascinated many in her time and continues to enchant people today. Her life is extensively studied and debated to understand her greatness. Some interesting facts about Cleopatra include the construction of a golden statue in her honor in a temple dedicated to the goddess Venus, as requested by her lover, the Roman leader Julius Caesar. This statue was venerated until at least the 2nd century AD. Cleopatra was even worshipped as a goddess, specifically as a new incarnation of Isis, a significant deity in ancient Egypt. Cleopatra's intelligence was refined, and she received an exceptional education in the palace where she lived. Fluent in seven or eight languages, including Egyptian, she was skilled in oratory and studied philosophy and rhetoric from a young age. She was the first in her family to speak the Egyptian language without interpreters. Living in Alexandria, a cultural center with the renowned Library of Alexandria, played a crucial role in shaping her culturally. Cleopatra's achievements extended to her relationships with two of the most famous Roman generals of her time, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, both of whom she loved. Like many historical figures, Cleopatra's life has been subject to distortion over time. While her image is widely recognized today, the reality of who she was has often been misrepresented. Physical representations of Cleopatra, commonly found on various objects, tend to contribute to these distortions rather than accurately depicting her. Plutarch, describing Cleopatra's appearance, noted that she wasn't so uniquely stunning that there was no basis for comparison or that one couldn't look at her without being moved. For a more reliable understanding of her physical features, we can turn to the coins that were created and circulated during Cleopatra's time. These coins serve as valuable sources, offering insights into her likely appearance. Over time, some busts have been sculpted that are believed to represent Cleopatra. When examining the coins, observers might notice features like a prominent nose and chin. In a humorous comment, philosopher Pascal once remarked that if Cleopatra's nose had been smaller, the entire face of the world would have been different. Considering this quip and studying the features depicted on the coins, it suggests that Cleopatra may not have been as extraordinarily beautiful as portrayed in cinema. Despite potential discrepancies in her physical appearance, one undeniable fact is that Cleopatra's conquest and personality far exceeded any Hollywood representation. Let's delve into why her historical impact and character go beyond cinematic portrayals. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, a ruling family that spanned three centuries. Their reign was marked by a complex web of marriages and internal conflicts, often involving deadly outcomes among family members. This powerful dynasty emerged after the death of Alexander the Great, the formidable king of Macedonia. Following Alexander's demise, his empire was divided among his generals, and an ancestor of Cleopatra, Ptolemy I Soter, established the Ptolemaic dynasty. Taking charge of the vibrant city of Alexandria, a cultural hub in ancient Egypt, the Ptolemies shaped a significant chapter in history. In the family lineage, Cleopatra VII stands out, with six other Cleopatras preceding her. In Alexandria, Cleopatra lived in a lavish palace adorned with wealth and exquisite ornaments. The palace, with over 100 rooms and stunning external landscapes, boasted breathtaking gardens adorned with statues and fountains. Over generations, successive Ptolemies expanded and enhanced this extraordinary palace, making it the most opulent in the Mediterranean. Cleopatra, the daughter of Ptolemy XII, grew up in this luxurious environment alongside her two sisters, Berenice IV and Arsino IV, and two brothers, Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV. Following her mother's death, Berenice IV briefly assumed power but met a tragic end at the hands of her own father. It's crucial to emphasize that a notable characteristic of the Ptolemaic lineage was a series of internal conflicts and, at times, lethal actions within the family. Afterwards, Arsino IV faced exile by Julius Caesar and was later executed by Mark Antony, following a request from her own sister, Cleopatra. Ptolemy XIV experienced a similar fate. Cleopatra assumed the throne of Egypt at the age of 17 after her father's death. Following tradition, she married her brother, Ptolemy XIII, who was only 13 at the time. As Cleopatra ruled, her brother husband developed an interest in governing independently, supported by three key advisors, Pothinus, Achilles, and Theodotus of Chios. 
they convinced him to break ties with Cleopatra and remove her from power. During her reign, Cleopatra aimed to maintain political connections with Italy, showcasing her strategic acumen. Her goal was to strengthen ties with the Romans, particularly with General Pompey, a leader from one of Rome's traditional families. These diplomatic efforts, however, led to accusations of treason, as her brother felt deceived. At the age of 21, Cleopatra, accused of treason, was forced into exile in Syria. There, she assembled an army. The young Egyptian king and his advisors sought to prevent her return to Alexandria at all costs. However, their plans took an unexpected turn when they learned that Pompey, a rival to Julius Caesar, was on his way to Egypt, expecting a warm welcome from the pharaoh due to his past friendship with Cleopatra's father. Pompey the Great, a highly skilled general, had a history of conquering numerous nations across Africa, Asia, and Europe. However, after a significant defeat in Greece against his rival Julius Caesar during what became known as Caesar's Civil War, Pompey sought refuge in Egypt. Caesar's Civil War had divided the Roman Empire between Pompey and Julius Caesar. When word spread that Pompey intended to seek refuge in Egypt, the Egyptian leaders faced a dilemma. Helping Pompey could be seen as a declaration of war against Julius Caesar, who commanded a powerful military force. Additionally, there was concern that Pompey might aid Cleopatra in regaining her royal position, potentially leading to trouble. On the other hand, Pompey had been a close friend of the father of the ruling couple in Egypt. If they didn't assist him, there was a risk of damaging ties with Rome and turning Egypt into an enemy. Theodotus, along with his fellow counselors Achilles and Pothinus, grappled with this difficult decision. As they pondered the consequences, Theodotus, with a smile, remarked, The dead do not bite. The decision was made to break ties with Pompey and establish an alliance with Julius Caesar. As Pompey approached Alexandria, he believed he would be welcomed by the Egyptians. However, a trap had already been set, pretending to extend a friendly welcome while plotting otherwise. Once Pompey set foot in Egypt, he faced a brutal fate. He was swiftly beheaded. A few days later, Julius Caesar arrived in Alexandria to confront his adversary. The Egyptians, showing Caesar Pompey's severed head, shocked him with the violence. Despite being enemies, Caesar respected Pompey. Acting on Caesar's orders, one of Ptolemy's advisors was executed. Caesar, along with his army, made his way to the royal palace, expressing his desire to meet the king and queen. Ptolemy XIII, aware of his sister Cleopatra's army, prepared to face her. Meanwhile, Cleopatra, understanding the danger and the desire to keep her away from the city, devised an unconventional plan to meet Caesar. With the help of a Sicilian supplier named Apollo Doris, they sailed down the Nile River in a boat, hidden for eight days. As they approached Alexandria, Cleopatra, still assisted by Apollo Doris, entered a sack made of papyrus. Apollo Doris tied the sack with a leather rope and carefully placed it in Julius Caesar's room at the palace. The details of Caesar's reaction upon discovering Cleopatra in the sack are uncertain, but the Egyptian queen immediately captivated him. With Caesar by her side, Cleopatra saw an opportunity to achieve her goals. The chance to eliminate her brother and rule in line with her interests was finally within reach. After the assassination of Pompey, Julius Caesar held a negative view of Ptolemy, Cleopatra's brother. Cleopatra, seizing the opportunity, used Pompey's death to her advantage. She convinced Caesar that she was the rightful heir to the throne of Egypt, and a romantic relationship developed between the Queen of Egypt and Julius Caesar. Caesar's decision to support Cleopatra angered Ptolemy, leading him to declare war on Julius Caesar. Despite being outnumbered, Caesar took a defensive stance, resulting in the siege of Alexandria. The Roman general, with reinforcements, eventually defeated Ptolemy's army in the Battle of the Nile. During the conflict, the young pharaoh drowned in the river. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar had a son named Ptolemy Caesar, also known as Caesarion. Caesar's support played a crucial role in consolidating Cleopatra's power in Egypt. Following these events, Caesar returned to Rome, and Cleopatra continued to reign over Egypt, witnessing prosperity and a cultural boom in Alexandria under her administration. In a significant turn of events, Cleopatra, now firmly established on the throne, organized an expedition to Rome. Accompanied by her son Caesarion, the product of her union with Julius Caesar, she stayed at Caesar's mansion in the city. Meanwhile, Caesar, at the height of his power, implemented political and social reforms and organized a triumph in his honor. The parade included Arsino, Cleopatra's sister, displayed as a prisoner, a symbolic gesture of Rome's victory over the Egyptians. When Julius Caesar introduced Cleopatra to Rome, the city was yet to attain the historical glory that would later define it. Unlike Alexandria, the capital of Ptolemaic Egypt, 
Rome was not on par in terms of grandeur. Caesar's relationship with the Egyptian queen stirred disapproval among the Roman elite. Rumors and lies circulated about the couple. Meanwhile, Caesar, named dictator in perpetuity, held unprecedented power, leaving Roman senators anxious about their diminishing influence. Fearing further loss of power, they conspired against Caesar, leading to his assassination in 44 BC during a Senate session. Rome descended into chaos. Mark Antony, Caesar's right-hand man, sought justice for the conspirators in a public square, reading Caesar's will, which notably excluded his son with Cleopatra. Instead, Caesar designated his nephew Octavius as his successor. With Rome becoming unsafe for Cleopatra, she returned to her kingdom. Octavius and Mark Antony, now in pursuit of those who betrayed Caesar and led their armies. In 41 BC, a notable encounter occurred between Cleopatra and Mark Antony. He invited her to Tarsus, a city in present-day Turkey, through a messenger. Cleopatra arrived in a dazzling boat with a gold stern, silver oars, and purple sails, a testament to her opulent lifestyle. As Cleopatra sailed into Rome, the journey was filled with music, flutes, lyres, and fifes playing in the background. The queen, adorned in all her splendor, was attended to by her servants, and the boat exuded a delightful fragrance. The entire population paused their tasks to witness Cleopatra's triumphant arrival, capturing the attention of all. Mark Antony was immediately smitten by the queen's beauty. In 41 BC, Cleopatra extended an invitation to the powerful Mark Antony to visit Alexandria. After spending time in the Egyptian city and becoming entangled with the queen, Mark Antony eventually returned to Rome. However, the two continued to exchange letters, maintaining their connection. They reunited after a considerable time, and in 40 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to twins, Helios, meaning sun in Greek, and Selene, meaning moon. During Mark Antony's absence from Cleopatra, he rekindled his relationship with his wife Fulvia in Rome, although Cleopatra remained in his thoughts. Fulvia's eventual death may have paved the way for Mark Antony to reunite with Cleopatra. However, Octavius, Julius Caesar's nephew, had other plans. He proposed that Mark Antony marry his sister, Octavia, and they had three children in two years. After Caesar's death, Mark Antony became a consul general, and the power dynamics in Rome shifted with the formation of the Second Triumvirate, consisting of Octavius, Mark Antony, and Lepidus. Lepidus distanced himself from politics, leading to a power struggle between Octavius and Mark Antony. Rome's authority was divided, with Octavius ruling the west and Mark Antony managing the eastern provinces. Despite being married, Mark Antony and Cleopatra's romance persisted, much to Octavius's disapproval. Their connection became official when they reunited in the city of Antioch. In Alexandria, they celebrated their union with lavish parties and banquets, showcasing their sovereignty. However, their happiness was interrupted when Mark Antony had to leave Egypt after a Parthian attack in Syria and Asia Minor. Octavius, displeased with the relationship between the Roman and the powerful Egyptian queen, disapproved of their union. Part of his concern stemmed from his sister Octavia, who had been rejected by Mark Antony. Additionally, there was fear of losing parts of the Roman Empire to the couple. This disagreement led to a new civil war in Rome, with supporters of Mark Antony facing off against Octavius's defenders. The decisive Battle of Actium took place in 31 BC in Greece, where Cleopatra accompanied her husband as they headed into the conflict. However, as Mark Antony's defeat became imminent, Cleopatra quietly returned to Egypt, falsely announcing a triumph. Octavius emerged victorious in the naval battle of Actium, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the imperial period. While Cleopatra tried to maintain her position and gain allies, the truth about her false triumph eventually came to light. Despite her efforts, and Mark Antony's altered state after defeat, they both struggled to rise again. The events surrounding the Battle of Actium had far-reaching consequences for Rome and the fate of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Octavia proposed Cleopatra to kill her lover Mark Antony in exchange for forgiveness. Ignoring this suggestion, Cleopatra continued to support and motivate her husband. Simultaneously, she worked with her personal physician to discover a painless poison, preparing for the worst. The tragic end for Mark Antony unfolded as Cleopatra tried to flee from Octavius and his advancing army in Alexandria. When news reached him that Cleopatra had supposedly died, the desperate Roman soldier took his sword and wounded his own chest. However, the strike was not fatal, and while bleeding and in pain, he learned that Cleopatra was still alive. In his final moments, Mark Antony, weakened by loss of blood dying in her arms. Before passing away, he requested Cleopatra to collaborate with Octavius for her own safety. Following Mark Antony's death, 
Caesar's heir Caesarion, was also killed by Octavius. During funerals at that time, it was customary for women to express grief by physically hurting themselves. Cleopatra followed this tradition, causing injuries that led to an infection. Octavius ordered medical treatment for her. However, grief-stricken and fearing the future, Cleopatra initially resisted the treatment and hoping to die. Octavius threatening her children compelled her to accept the treatment. Out of love for her heirs, Cleopatra eventually agreed and her health gradually recovered. Cleopatra's impactful end marked a moment eternally etched in history. Attempting to escape her rival Octavius in Alexandria, she was arrested but refused to surrender, unwilling to endure the humiliation of being a prisoner and hostage of Rome. Her sons, including Caesar Ion, were separated, with some taken to Rome to be raised by Octavia. Constantly under surveillance by Octavius, Cleopatra had attempted suicide twice after the death of Mark Antony. However, her cunning plans took an unexpected turn. Rather than following Octavius's intentions, Cleopatra, always a strategist, took matters into her own hands and brought an end to her life. Before doing so, she sent a letter to Octavius, requesting to be buried beside her late husband. The details of her death are uncertain, with some sources suggesting she was deliberately bitten by a serpent, while others argue she ingested a lethal poison. Considering Cleopatra's knowledge of poisons and her strategic nature, it's likely she had prepared for her death in advance. In the most famous version, Cleopatra was found on a couch dressed in beautiful garments, with witnesses claiming she had a serene expression. She passed away nine days after the death of her lover, Mark Antony. Her funeral was solemn and elegant, befitting an Egyptian queen, and her wish to be buried next to Mark Antony was honored. With Cleopatra's death, Egypt became a Roman province, marking the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty's hegemony in the region. Cleopatra's story is truly captivating, standing out among her female ancestors who were significant rulers in ancient Egypt. Unlike women in other civilizations at the time, Egyptian women, including Cleopatra, enjoyed more freedom and held influential roles. Cleopatra's life was marked by the tumultuous history of the Ptolemaic lineage, characterized by numerous family murders. Despite this dark legacy, Cleopatra played a central role in the Ptolemaic government, making crucial decisions and shouldering major responsibilities as the ruler of Egypt. Her proactive and skillful approach, along with her rare determination, set her apart. Beyond the stereotypes that often reduce her story to seducing Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, Cleopatra was a woman of great political achievements. Her remarkable knowledge and intelligence allowed her to captivate two of history's most legendary figures. While her image has sometimes been misrepresented and prejudiced, Cleopatra's life was far more than romantic entanglements. As a powerful and influential queen, Cleopatra left a lasting impact on history. Artists like Michelangelo and William Shakespeare found inspiration in her story, turning her into an illustrious piece of art. Cleopatra's legacy continues to fascinate people, proving that her captivating journey and achievements extend far beyond simplistic narratives.